Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the PIAA State Playoffs 6A Boys First Round Matchup. We're here with Mathak Head Coach Pat Lockard. And, Pat, first off, congrats on a wonderful season to this point. What's been the driving force on getting you guys to this point? Uh, thanks, Bob. Yeah, it's, it's been a really great season for this group of guys. Uh, honestly, I think it's been our chemistry and togetherness in the locker room. These guys are really pulling for each other. Uh, no matter who's out there on the floor, they've really been buying into the aspect of team basketball. So uh, I was emphasizing that today, if we continue to do that, we give ourselves the best chance to compete in this game today. Christian Matos really stands out to us. What does he bring to your group? Yeah, he's really like that that three-level scorer of, like, he can get to the basket, he's got a good mid-range, uh, and he shoots a high percentage from the outside. So to see that from a sophomore guard is really, really impressive. So his confidence knows no bounds. So I, I think he's ready to step up and have a good game today. And one is slowing down Archbishop Woods' attack. Uh, hoping they don't shoot a great percentage. But things that we can control um, are, like, getting back on defense and making sure they don't get the easy looks. This team's too good to give them easy looks on top of the challenging looks they're going to hit. So if we can get back on defense and make them run half-court offense, I think that gives us the best chance in this game today. Thanks for doing this. Good luck. Thanks, Bob. Pat Locker with us. Jeff, Bruce, back to you guys. Thank you very much, Jeff Shirilla, along with Bruce, your last name. Badgley. Badgley. I always forget that as uh, <laughs> we're getting ready to start the, this uh, first round of the 6A playoffs. We just right, talked right. to the head coach of uh, Methacton, Pat Locker. They came in. They come in with a 19-7 and record, while Archbishop Wood comes in at 16-8. and We'll send it down to Bob to talk to the head coach, John Thanks, Moscow. Jeff. Here with... John Mosco, head coach of Archbishop Wood, a familiar spot for you guys in the PIAA State Playoffs, an opportunity for another deep run into March. How would you guys get here, and what's one key to a stretch run? Uh, key to a stretch run is for us to stay together, you know, keep playing the way we have been, and we got to defend better than we did against Judge in the Cavalry playoff game. And, you know, it's a revenge tour, I told them. You, got, you get a chance to regroup and get another shot at it and you got to play the game the right way how do you manage that you lose in the state in the catholic league quarters like you said and it in addition to obviously that's not the result you want now you have a long break how did you guys manage that time frame as a coaching staff to get to this moment um we just you know we continued to practice in different different ways by you know having somebody come in work them out uh we scrimmaged uh we just threw different things at them like one day we broke up in different groups just tried to keep them um interested in playing we scrimmaged up for Dublin, and then we had two gave them a couple days off and then two hard practices once we knew who we were playing and figured see where we have to go and you know our home our girls got a home game we had to travel out to delaware county we can talk about that some other time but how about one key to slowing down a really talented Mathacton team? Uh, defending the three-point line and running them off the three-point line and playing our pace. I know that's two, but we'll give it to you. Yeah, I appreciate that. John, thank you for thank the time. You. Good luck. Bob, as always. Great seeing you. The more keys. Back to you guys up yeah, there. Yeah, thank you very much, Bob. The more keys, the merrier. Bruce, uh, looking at this, I we've, we've seen Archbishop Wood a bunch of times. Mathacton not as much coming in as the fifth seed out of District 1 on paper. It looks like this could be a pretty good matchup. What are you looking forward to in tonight's matchup? I, I think the key, and I was talking to Coach Lockard, uh, you know, uh, down on the court, and I felt that it was getting off to a good start. Um, that, you know, that they could play with these guys, mental mindset on, you know, how they can perform, and to see whether or not, you know, the game plan is working, you know, and talking to Coach Lockhart as well. How long are you going to stick with the game plan? You know, obviously, you know, like most coaches, I mean, they've got everything scripted in their own mind, but how long are you going to stick with the game plan if for some reason Archbishop Wood comes out and, you know, gets a quick lead? Bob Long jo joining us back here, high above the court here at Cardinal O'Hara High School, and and, Bob, I thought it was really interesting that uh, Coach Mosco talked about trying to stay sharp. And, you know, Upper Dublin, you saw them last night. They got bounced, but a, a team, a playoff-quality team. So they've had the long layoff, while on the other side, District 1, it's always a grind. The Thacton loses in their quarterfinals, has two playback games. So they are in that playoff mode. So on one side, you've got a team that's been gearing up, of course, uh Archbishop Wood did have the the right. win against Northeast. So talk about the you know the, the kind of the 
opportunities as both teams sure. come in from different perspectives. I, I think it's a challenge for Philadelphia Catholic League teams in the position that Archbishop Wood was. So to add a little bit of color to what John Mosco was referring to, they lose to Father Judge, says Archbishop Wood, in a quarterfinal game that we called together, Jeff. And they have to wait and watch as Father Judge has a chance to play in the Palestra. One more win would have put Father Judge in this position. Archbishop Wood would have been at home. So they're watching with bated breath as their former assistant, and in many cases very good (laughs) friend, goes down at the Palestra. It pulls on the heartstrings, but it keeps Archbishop Wood's season alive. And so now how do you keep the juices flowing during that time, I think it becomes really, really interesting versus exactly what you said with Methacton. They've been in playoff mode for three weeks now, and they came out with what I think folks might consider an upset over a Coatesville team that's very talented, had beaten St. Joe's Prep earlier in the league, one of the best teams in the Philadelphia Catholic League, and they're extremely talented. The ability to get four or five guys from distance to get the feet set and knock it down with some consistency, that's the challenge. The challenge to defend Archbishop Wood is their ability to get to the basket, the athleticism of Bethea and Reed and Maxi and Milan Dean. They just come at you in waves. We're, we've been on th- this broadcast now for about 10 minutes, and that's the first time we've heard the name Jalil Bethea. Yeah. He's going to the University of Miami, and he's certainly the, the, the go-to guy. But Josh Reed is also a talented player going to Drexel. Talk about their what they're going to bring to the table and what Nathakin's going to have to do to try to slow them down. Well, the thing is, is you know, there's there's more than one player that Nathakin's got to worry about. Okay, obviously Bethea is one that obviously you have to try and take away, but the supporting cast is really there, and I think that that's what you know Nathakin fears most is if you take away Bethea, that there's so many other pieces to the wood puzzle that can you know really take up the slag. But Methacton as well, I think that they've got to come out, just like we spoke a little bit earlier here, I think that they've got to come out, show that they can play that up-tempo game with Archbishop Wood, and, you know, see how the chips fall. And while we were watching the warm-ups, you talked about it with the head coach, Christian Matos, that sweet-looking lefty Mm -hmm. who looks like he can get up and down the floor, and as a sophomore... I think it's going to be an inter- interesting matchup to see if he goes against Bethea or against Reed or if they start switching it around to see how he can do against you know one of the tougher defenders in the uh, Catholic League. It's a challenge, certainly, but he is up for the moment. Jeff, the interesting story on him, you talk about how young he is. How about the fact that he has suffered a broken bone a week after freshman tryouts last year? So effectively, in many cases, a freshman his first full season and yet contributing at such a high level. This, this is gonna, I think it's gonna be exciting because we have this bracket and the, the, the winner of this game, we found out earlier today, Lower Marion has already won. They yep. won, they won by 30, so they're sitting around waiting to see who this matchup is. And Lower Marion's considered one of the better teams in the state. Oh yeah. Predicted to possibly win it all and this team, the fact, and only lost by five in the regular season. So that tells you that they can play against, you mentioned Coatesville, they've played tough against uh-huh. Lower Marion, and now they're going to see what they can do against Archbishop Wood. I think that second round matchup, regardless of who it is, and Bruce, I think you'll agree on this one, whether it's Methacton, Lower Marion, or Lower Marion, Archbishop Wood, that's must-see television, but we need to play this to get there. Absolutely right, and I think that there's some pressure on Archbishop Wood, okay, to carry that Catholic League flag into the next round. You know, the expectation about Catholic League teams is that, you know, they're going to progress deep into the PIAA tournament. You know, a lot of the teams have already punched their ticket to the next round. Now it's Archbishop Wood's turn. I think there's a little pressure on them. I, I definitely agree with that, especially as you talked with Coach Mosco, the stumble against uh, the father judge, and then having to sit and wait, and then they kind of start gearing back up against Northeastern. They get the win, but they had high hopes to get to the Palestra and win the Catholic League title, especially with these seniors going out. And they, they've come up a little short. Some may have said some may have said they've underachieved. Mm-hmm. Today's a chance to wipe the slate clean. Five wins away from winning a state championship. That's right, because you think about two years ago, Jeff, they were in the state final and lost to Roman Catholic. Last year, they were in the state semifinal, lost to Roman Catholic. Sensing a theme? <laughs> you know, last year in the Philadelphia Catholic League semifinal, lost to Roman Catholic. Now it's going to be a long way until they'd have the opportunity to see them again. That would also come in the state semifinal. But, yes, this golden class, if you will, and the classes that followed the Rasul Diggins of the world, the Deshaun Shepherds of the world, prior to that, the Colin Gillespies of the world. This is a program that has their opportunity to etch their mark. They did not win a Catholic League championship. 
in this four-year period, but they can win a state title at the 6A level. And based upon some of the limitations that, say, Roman Catholic has down the road, three guys ineligible on that roster, not that it mattered much last year on the KLH road to the title game, but Archbishop Wood is a full and complete unit, which you can't really say about all that many Philadelphia yeah. Catholic League teams in these state playoffs. Yeah, nope. no, you make a great point, and and you know you bring up a great point there too. You know, I mean, can you know are they going to win the big one this year? You know that that's the that's the are they going to get past you know Roman Catholic and, and get you know that that big prize? Well, and in order to get to Roman Catholic, start with the five seed out of District One, Methacton, and then you've got the the number one seed waiting in the next round as we are about to, uh, as we are already announcing the big the starting lineup. That's right. The starters for Methacton, number three, Mason Conrad. His father, by the way, John Conrad, is the North Penn High School basketball coach. He's got a high basketball IQ. Christian Matos, we mentioned him, the leading scorer on the team, standing at six foot one. Alex Herman, a multi-year starter. First team all division in back-to-back years. Manny Rodriguez. We weren't sure whether it would be Manny Rodriguez to start or maybe Anthony Dadazio. Rodriguez gets the start. And Sal Iamello, two-year starter. Strongest player on this team per that. Pat Lockard introduced next. For Archbishop Wood, they'll wear white here today. Technically, the home team in a neutral site game. Deuce Maxi, Jaleel Bethea, Milan Dean. They just run athleticism out there on the floor with those three. To hear Howell, first year starter for Archbishop Wood, gives key minutes and mixes it up down low. And speaking of mixing it up down low, it's a five guard rotation, but Josh Reed leads the team in rebounding, offensive and defensive. And Jeff, that's a key for them to control the glass against Methacton. Josh Reed's going to have to be part of it. I've seen plenty of write-ups, and I think the descriptions I've seen, he's a Swiss Army knife. He does a little bit of everything, averaging 19 points a game. He is definitely one of the keys for tonight's ball game. Yeah, and obviously that rebounding game, you know, Coach Mosco talked about the fact that they've got to get up. You know, they want to play their tempo. Well, it starts with the rebound to create the break, and uh, that's going to be one of the keys for me is whether or not Wood can control the glass. Jeff Sherilla, Bruce Badgley, Brady Joyce on the camera, Bob Long here on the play-by-play. And for these two 6A teams, a lot of games across the state have already been played here today. But their state playoff run for Methacton and Archbishop Wood starts now. Sal Iamello will start with the ball in his hands, Methacton in the green. This team loves to move off the ball. They can dot that three-point line and knock it down if you don't close out. Good defense there by Jalil Bethea, but then he picks up an early personal foul. And it might be a partisan Methacton crowd with the student section and a lot of noise when the number seven player in the country picks up his first. Alex Herman, a guy who can shoot, he can distribute. Couple Guards of le- one to five. Couple of lefties. This is the, the yeah the second. Uh, we know that uh, that I always felt left-handed players just had an advantage in high school basketball because you, you always say have your guy go to the left, and uh, in their particular case, that's <laughs> the way that they want to go. But I think that it just keeps teams off balance when you've got some left-handed players. Milan Dean forces the issue. An early foul against Methacton. By the way, Herman, at six foot three, walked in as a freshman. Man after my own heart here, at five foot eight. Wow. So he has grown seven inches in high school. Here's Jaleel Bethea. A guy with parking lot range. Good kick for Howell. And Archbishop Woods on the board. And, and that's what I talked about, the supporting cast. You saw two players go to Bethea, opened up the three, and they knocked it down. Herman had a really good look. Bethea the one to sky for that rebound. They do a nice job stopping the ball. Jaleel Bethea, he had a monster game against Cardinal O'Hara on this floor earlier this year. Josh Reed wildly 
And perhaps a bailout call. Methacton less than thrilled about that call. You can be the judge at home here as Reed kind of gets into the lane, loses his footing. There's some conversion and hands. There's going to be conversion and hands all night long. Two physical basketball teams here tonight. Looking forward to this one. And I honestly think a key to Archbishop Wood tonight or this afternoon, it's going to be how well they play in the half court. You know, I mean, how well they're going to create good looks in the half court offense. So here Howell brings down the offensive rebound. Maxie steps into it. That's a long three. Good hands by Howell, but Methacton comes up with it. This is where they're dangerous. Working hard. Oh. And Herman just gave it up. Took his eye off the ball, passed down low, looking to try to make, make a quick move baseline and just didn't look it in. Knocked it out of bounds. By the way, 5 o'clock p.m. in the east. So for those of you arriving on time, <laughs> welcome. We're a minute and 20 seconds into this one. PIAA getting off to the quick start here at Cardinal O'Hara High School. Milan Dean. Dean. Ball getting a little sticky there, and he couldn't finish it. Really solid defense by Mathacton. Conrad able to slow it down. Herman, that one's blocked by Milan Dean. Yeah, one on three, not a good choice. Reed, tough shot. Just not falling. Christian Matos. I was going to say, we have not heard his name called. And Howell picked up the personal foul. An awkward-looking play there as Matos had trouble with the dribble and to hear Howell got tied up with him. Second team foul. Yeah, it looks like Howell drew the short straw of having to uh, guard Matos there. but Really nice crowd here today. Packing... Certainly the two sidelines. A nice student section on the baseline for Methacton. Matos hits good for three. <laughs> Love the jab step, pull back, pull the trigger, drain the three. Maxi off the down screen. Playing off two feet. That's excellent offense. Really, really good stuff from Deuce Maxi on the assist for the Reed Bucket. It's fun to watch offenses go like this. Bruce moving the ball, extra pass. Absolutely right. That's what I talk about. I mean, it's nice. To, even though it's a quick pace, the half-court offense. Oh, look at Matos. Christian Matos from college range. And these fans are in it early, Bob. Great student section traveling. Green, no good. And Mathacton is out on the run. Got two feet in the lane. Follow there. The trailer was Herman. And it's a four-point lead for Methacton. And just my key to the game was Methacton being off to a fast start. And they are off to a fast start. That's a really tough shot for Jaleel Bethea. Howell got a hand on it, as did Reed, but team rebounding for Methacton carrying the day early. Mason Conrad came up with it. Give credit to Manny Rodriguez on the defensive end. Herman couldn't save it. Keep an eye on that. Manny Rodriguez guarding Jaleel Bethea, forcing him to take that tough shot on the last possession. Hand in the face in the lane. Now, can you do that for 32 minutes is the question. <laughs> we'll see if they rotate any other defenders. Maxi playing off two feet again. He's done an excellent job with that. That time just couldn't finish. But I love the take. Get to where you need to go, not out of control. I am Mello. And Jaleel Bethea, by the way, guarding Iamello. Quick on the switch, though, and Nathacton setting all types of off-ball screens to create this switch they want. Matos! Whoa. Matos! They just isolated him, and he went 
to the basket this time. I mean, that's just great awareness of the defender. Bethea to the rim. Too easy for Jaleel Bethea with a few things to say to the Methacton student section. Well, Matos and Bethea going punch for punch. I'll sign up for that. It really feels like Methacton wants to be patient and then strike when the moment has their opportunity. Don't push it. And they've got good ball handlers across the floor. One of them is Ali Ayamelo, who got two feet in the lane again and always looks to kick. Strong take to the rim and just muscles his way to the hoop. Well, that was a beautiful offensive set for them. Really isolated at curl around the defender right to the basket. And the foul goes against Mike Green. That is his first personal foul. That hesitation as he got around the defender, used the arm to give himself some space, hesitated, and then got hard to the glass, drew the foul. Manny Rodriguez is 90% from the foul line on the year. A lot of these guys are talented free throw shooters. Matos at 72%. Got another guy, Dadazio, will be first off the bench at 80%. True to form. Archbishop Wood, I think they knew they'd have a battle on their hands here today. Mathacton, a proud program, ready and willing to play anybody. Bethea, slow on the closeout. Reed comes up with it. There's that Swiss Army knife getting in there, getting the rebound, getting the putback. Yeah, that second chance points. Boy, that could be huge for Wood today. Matos, tough shot. Oh, oh my goodness. Wow. Christian Matos is ready for the moment. Welcome to the PIAA playoffs, sir. 17 points per contest. Josh Reed finishes with the left. And again, another nice half-court offensive set by Archbishop Wood. Yep. That's right. It doesn't feel like either offense is particularly forced right now. A grab is called off the ball. And if that's Mike Green, I think it is. It's his second personal foul. No, they call it against Brady McAdams. Uh, yeah, the trail on the hold. Yep, there he is. That at the weak side block is the call. Yep. Andy Rodriguez checks out for Mathacton. You said how long could he do that? Could he play defense for 32 minutes? Well, he's getting a blow here as a substitution. The Dazio comes in. Oh, and Bethea no. is going to check it down. See you later. That's a muted dunk as far as Jaleel Bethea is concerned. He can really throw it down when he wants to. Matos for the answer. That's the third attempt from that spot. He's two of three from college range here today. Bethea, oh my goodness, that's unbelievable. I mean, that's playing off two feet. We talked about playing off two feet. That's playing off two feet, getting to the pivot and but, getting to the hole. And quickly getting to the spot where he created a shot for himself. Contact and attacking the body. Deuce Maxi was in the area. And it's instead going to go against Brady McAdams. That's his second personal foul. Wood, a little bit of a rhythm now. Down by six, eight to two run to tie this ball game up. Sal Iamello, the 60% foul shooter. In comes Isan Bea for Archbishop Wood. Yeah, it looks like Wes Robinson entering the game for Mathak, and he's a big physical presence on the inside. But Pat Lockard also talked about how Robinson can switch onto a guard as needed. He loves that ability to guard one to five for Robinson. Just a sophomore. So when they bring Bay on the floor, it allows him to take a guy like that off the ball. Jaleel Bethea, what a move. Yeah. 
Dribble drive. Iamello, yes! Oh. Sal Iamello and Jeff, it's a broken record, but playing off two feet allows you to make the right play in that situation. Yeah, both teams really playing the half court well so far on offense. Reed, maybe that was a bit forced, but the offensive carom, a deep three for Bethea. There's Reed, and that's how Archbishop Wood can get you on the offensive glass. Final six seconds of a rapidly moving first quarter. Matos has the seam. What a finish. And an eight-minute period of basketball that's as good as it gets. Christian Matos finishes at the 10. I tell you what, pick your poison with Matos. You get out there too aggressive on the outside, he's going to take you to the basket. And if you're not aggressive up front, he's going to drop it down. I think he only missed one shot in the quarter. He certainly is as advertised coming into this game Six, 12 points in the first quarter. As always, Jeff Shrula stats, officially unofficial. Officially unofficial. Officially unofficial. I'll go by your stats any day of the week, partner. Now we'll take a quick break and hear from our sponsor here today, Faulkner Infinity. Faulkner Infinity of Willow Grove is the number one Infinity dealer in the region. Faulkner has received the Infinity Award of Excellence given to only 10 dealers nationwide for outstanding customer satisfaction. You'll enjoy our easy, no-pressure atmosphere, whether you buy online, in person, or a little of both. We offer loaner vehicles for service or pick up and drop off of your vehicle to make service as convenient as possible. Come find out why. More people choose Faulkner Infinity to be sure. Thank you to Faulkner Infinity for sponsoring today's telecast, specifically Pat Haggerty, GM over there, who is also on the Archbishop Wood bench. I want to thank Archbishop Wood for sponsoring this telecast. In fact, Pat, Pat had a little bit of a cameo on that commercial that Cam- you saw there. Cameo or starring role? Yeah, I guess starring role is probably. Co- co- co-star. You'll have to ask Pat on that <laughs> one. Jaleel Bethea on the step back. Yes. Tried to coerce the contact as well. Good no call from the officials. But, Bruce, that's what makes him special. It it does make him special. I mean, at some point in time, Bethea's going to have to figure out how they can get some help out there with him. Matos. Another great finish. And Milan Dean went for the steal. Couldn't keep him in front. Dean. Wildly through the lane. Again, Josh Reed count it and one. Archbishop Wood really getting some nice opportunities. They're creating shots, high percentage shots off the dribble. You would never think of this team with their rebounding totals, Bruce, as a team that starts five guards. You know, or only guards and wings if you must. But there is not much size, traditional size, on this team, Bruce. But Milan Dean can jump out of the building. Josh Reed is an excellent rebounder. Jaleel Bethea gives you maybe the most length on the team. Well, they put themselves in good position on every shot that goes up. Rodriguez a bit too strong. There's Robinson and a great finish. There's that physical presence on the inside with the second chance bucket. Reed forces his way through contact and it's on the floor. The blocking foul is called and it goes, it goes against Alex Herman. His first. In that last possession, Archbishop Wood picked up full court pressure. Mathacton was able to break and then get that basket inside off the rebound. We'll have to see how much more we get from that full court look. Great block inside by Mathacton. Milan Dean stays with it. Lost in the fact there is that's knocked out of bounds by Reed. Jeff is that that was an, an incredible call from John Mosco on the baseline play, right? You have flashing to the top of the key was Josh Reed, and then a curl underneath of that from Milan Dean to put him in a really good spot. I just don't think he went up quickly enough, early enough. A couple of cracks just couldn't get it to go down. I'm impressed with Mathacton's poise. They don't get rattled. All five of the guys with the ball are able to 
What a block. Milan Dean, first on the floor is Mathacton. Herman comes up with it. Oh. And Milan Dean picks up the personal foul. Let's see that acrobat on replay. Wow. Off the foot and then the hustle, as you said, Bob. And you know what? Attack the body of the shot blocker. Milan Dean very clearly comes down with that right arm. Good job by Herman. Good job by our cameraman, Brady. There's nobody better than Brady Joyce on the camera. Brady. <laughs> well, he can't hear us. He's looking at scores. <laughs> we need to get him a headset and let him chime in. The man behind the camera. That's right. You know what? On his senior day for LaSalle College High School basketball and what we do at Bob Long Sports with broadcasting, we did put Brady on the color commentary. Jaleel Bethea got a hands in there. Held ball situation. It'll stay here on the alternating possession. But it is really physical on the inside on both ends of the court. Solid interior passing, though, from Herman to Robinson that time. Robinson just kind of didn't keep that ball high and allowed Bethea to get in there. Iamello, kick out for Robinson. Robinson, maybe one extra step, and that's, then a toss to the bench. That's the Euro. He's using the Euro. Uh-huh. Interesting play there. Get another look. One, two, three. All right. We'll give it to him. <laughs> and you can see that they're kind of collapsing on Bethea outside now. Reed. And they're going to wave that one off. It's a smaller lineup, so you've got you got to look like a zone on this defensive yep. possession. And so you want to get the ball to the middle of the zone one way or the other. You can do it via the dribble drive like Reed does there. You can flash somebody to the high post and count on the defense to collapse. And now they come out man-to-man -man off the inbounds. Bethea. Step back three. Reed again is unbelievable on the glass. A foul called against Mathacton. They just cannot keep him off the boards, Jeff. Just great positioning on the inside there, too. You know, you don't have to be the tallest guy if you can get the position in there. Alex Herman picks up his second personal foul, looks like. He sits down. It's a big call. Yeah, he averages and around 12 points a game. Maybe there's confusion there. And as we go to the scorer's table, and it's going to go against Anthony D'Addazio. They may have even announced one white at the scorer's table initially, which was Julio Bethea. Of course, the foul wasn't on him. <laughs> so Herman... No problems there as he sits down. Doesn't tick, pick up one more foul. But D'Addazio picks up the personal. Nobody closes out on Deuce Maxi, and that's not usually a good idea. He can knock it down from distance. Bruce, it hasn't been his best shooting year, but you know that when he gets the feet set, not that many better. Yeah, absolutely. And he's played a really good defensive game, but here's Matos again. Strong rebound there, pulled away by Milan Dean. Maxi to stay hot. Timeout called by Pat Lockard. It's a three-point lead for Archbishop Wood. They've been chipping away at the deficit. They got it to tie it a couple of times. They take the lead, and Bruce, I think, Pat Lockard says, let's make sure we get a really good possession here. Yeah, absolutely, and I'll, I'll be honest with you. I think Coach Lockard would sign up for this, you know, that he's within three points with you know, five minutes remaining here on the first half. Now he's got to work a little bit on his offensive of, uh, game plan there. Uh, they looked a little discombobulated the last couple times, you know, down the court. But uh, really interested to see how they're going to work that wood defense to free up. All you need is a sliver of space for Christian Mato. Yeah. The thing that I've liked is the rotation with the number of players he's gone eight. I think maybe nine deep of players, and you're not one of these teams that has to rely on your core six 
maybe seven, that he's got enough ball handlers and enough players to rotate in and out that he feels confident and in, in, in the ability to hang with a, a probably a more athletic team with against Archbishop Wood. The winner of this game, we know it already, based upon the times of the games played, will take on Lower Marion, the champions of District 1. Wood in the zone now. Good kick, Matos. And, Kind of caught that on his left-hand side. And as a left-handed shooter, sometimes that's more oh. difficult. Josh Reed lost the handle. There's those one-handed passes that seem to be so popular with the players now that I'm sure our coach is nightmare. Another look. Yeah, up, up, and away. Just, just, just didn't have the control. Mason Conrad, great find for Robinson. Ayamelo. Ayamelo! Unbelievable finish. Wow. I mean, he had two attempts at the basket cut off. His third one, he barely gets that ball in the basket. Bethea wants this one-on-one -on -one matchup against Adazio. Maxi with a nice finger roll. A wonderful ball fake to set that drive up, too. And he's so confident, whether he's shooting a three or driving the lane, that side of the court has been his friend today. Christian Matos defended by Josh Reed. Ayamelo. Trap. No, the jump ball is the call, so we'll reverse the arrow. It'll be Archbishop Wood basketball just the way it would have been if a travel was called. But then you lose the your arrow. That's right. John Mosco's not going to like that call. I would have, I would have blown the whistle for the, 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 the tie up travel. Manny Rodriguez defensively against Jaleel Bethea. Well, they're really playing aggressively. <laughs> a couple a guys there. <laughs> they're going to get Wes Robinson, I believe, on the, yep. the pass off for the defense and body. <laughs> playing yep. more like a middle linebacker. Yeah, a chuck, <laughs> if you will, on the off ball cut. Okay, saying, come on. aggressive with them. They got to rough them up a little bit. They got to muck it up. But they're going to be shooting free throws here the rest of the way in this second quarter yeah. with 3.32 on the clock. Yes, there was an overrated chant <laughs> as Jalil Bethea 23 points per contest, 7 rebounds per contest, 90% foul shooter <laughs> goes to the line. Two-time Philadelphia Catholic League MVP. But anything to get under the skin, right? Anything. All in good fun. That's right. As long as it's in good taste. No doubt about that. Josh Reed checks out. And Jaleel Bethea, a momentary respite, I'd have to imagine. This has to be, I think, cr critical slash danger potential for Methacton because you've got your five fouls, so every foul is now going to send Wood to the line, and you're down by five. You haven't had a good flow in the last couple of possessions. And Herman has been on the bench for a good majority of that. Aya Mello, a blocking foul is called. Deuce Maxey was the one on the floor. I think he'll pick up the personal. And it's not. Uh, yes, it is. It's Maxey. Okay, Maxey picks it up. Another look, and... He goes down easy. The other thing, Jeff, he's right underneath the basket. I was going to say, there. you talk, I heard you in the earlier game talk about no restricted area, but he's, he's camped out underneath the basket. You're going to, you're not going to get a lot of uh, favorable calls in that situation. Iamello, the 60% foul shooter, missed the first. Looks like Mason Conrad back in. And he missed the second as well. They've, they've missed a bunch in this first half. Josh Reed, so tough to stop him in transition. Matos, Archbishop Wood didn't get back in time. But they ended up to scramble. Recovery. Hi, Amelo, it's a deep one. And it oh. rattles home. Wow. It's a big bucket, Bruce. 
That was a big bucket. They really need to stay close here down the, down the stretch here in the half. Milan Dean. I take my time if I'm Mathacton here. Matos wants the one-on-one -on -one matchup against Mike Green. He pulls up. That was a long one. <laughs> He's missed three Heat or check. four in a row now. Good closeout against Green. Poked away from behind. Mathacton working so hard on defense, but two offensive rebounds. Sets up the corner triple for Mike Green. And, you know, but they just had a good half, but... The role players on this Wood team have really stepped up this first half. Well, and you have to when Jaleel Bethea is on the bench as he is right now. In fact, where is Jaleel Bethea? Oh, he's sitting at the scorer's table. So we'll come back <laughs> in on the next stoppage. What a find. Josh Reed throws it down. And that's really the first time I think this half that Wood was a, been able to get out and, and have a quick basket off the break. Seven-point lead is the largest lead of the day for the Vikings of Archbishop Wood. Rodriguez gave it up. Mason Conrad. And a foul is oh. going to be called. He was, he was in trouble. Yep. To hear how he picks it up. But I'm with you, Jeff. I think he finds his way onto that blue paint, does Rodriguez, even without the nudge. Yep. Yeah. A minute 15 to go. It's very interesting here. I don't see Mathacton as a hold the ball for 75 seconds team. No, not at all. Not when you get a look like that. Maybe an extra pass too many? No, oh, I don't think wow. so. Manny Rodriguez. Off the feed from Wes Robinson. Maxi can't get the answer. I mean, if there's a team that I think wants to run some offense and maybe take a little air out of the ball, it's Wood. You're talking about the wrong team. Bruce. I know, I know. <laughs> you can't argue with that look. Maxi's been good from beyond the arc here today. Got a wide open look with the feet set. Well, and, and a, well, the other thing too is you know they're going to the line if they get foul too. So that's yep. right. And all Archbishop Wood has to do today, in theory, is from what we've seen, put the ball on the rim because the offensive rebounding has been a massive advantage in favor of the team in white. And that, like I said, I felt that a big key to the game was how how well Archbishop Wood was going to play in the half court on their offensive sets. I think they played the first half very well. Bethea makes them both. Six-point lead, 56 seconds to play here in the first half. And what do you do if you're Pat Lockard and this Mathacton basketball team? Do you hold for one? I don't know if they can with the pressure that Wood's putting on them. Iamello, two feet in the lane. Good cut by Robinson. Wow. That is just brilliant offense, and it shows you, Bruce, what a paint touch does for you. And clearly, these guys know where each other is on the court at every any given time. The track meet continues. Josh Reed on the runner. Now with 22, I think you... Take the air out of the ball. The cliche. Get the last shot. They got Matos on the high post. I am mellow. I am mellow. A tough shot. Brought down by Milan Dean. Still plenty of time. Down to two. Got it off in time. And not a half bad look at the end of the first half. Archbishop Wood puts up 41 points on the board. They led by seven at the most. Methacton had the early cushion. Bruce relinquished it. But they've had the answer by and large, and they are right here in this contest. Yeah, they absolutely are, Bob. And, you know, they've just got to tighten up a little bit, I think, on their half-court defense because Wood's done a good job of getting some decent looks in the paint. And then also, I think that the Wood has shot the uh, ball well from distance, too. So... The two can be a, a lethal combination. 
you know, they have had a couple of fast break points, but predominantly Wood has just prevailed because of their half-court offense. Jeff, what do you think? Yeah, getting to the boards has definitely been key, and defensively hanging around with uh, with with, Ma- with Matos, starting off hot, got that early six-point lead, cooled off a little bit, took a couple of longer shots that didn't quite, you know, connect, and now, uh, you know, they find themselves having to stay in touch and then see if they can overcome here in the second half. Yeah, let's see what Coach Lockhart does to kind of free up Matos the second half. He started to have some trouble shooting from distance. He seemed to be effective getting to the basket. So let's see what he does to maybe free him up on some drives to the hoop. The coaches will take their time, make a few adjustments. We'll tell you about our sponsor in this time as well. Just a few minutes until we get underway in the second half. But thank you to Faulkner Infinity and Archbishop Wood High School for sponsoring today's broadcast. Faulkner Infinity of Willow Grove is the number one Infinity dealer in the region. Faulkner has received the Infinity Award of Excellence given to only 10 dealers nationwide for outstanding customer satisfaction. You'll enjoy our easy, no-pressure atmosphere, whether you buy online, in person, or a little above for service or pick up and drop off of your vehicle to make service as convenient as possible. Come find out why. More people choose Faulkner Infinity to be sure. Faulkner Infinity of Willow Grove is the number one Infinity dealer in the region. Faulkner has received the Infinity Award of Excellence given to only 10 dealers nationwide for outstanding customer satisfaction. You'll enjoy our easy, no-pressure atmosphere, whether you buy online, in person, or a little of both. We offer loaner vehicles for service or pick up and drop off of your vehicle to make service as convenient as possible. Come find out why. More people choose Faulkner Infinity to be sure.
Yeah. Are we on camera off? On. Welcome back, folks. <laughs> Second half about to get underway. We'll welcome you now inside our broadcast booth. Bob Long, Jeff Sherilla, Bruce Badgley, and Brady Joyce on camera. Brady did a lot of work for us, putting together this bracket for us. You did a lot of work on the statistics. Yeah, what we'll do you get, want to start with? We'll get to the bracket in a second. The thing that jumped out to me is that Christian Matos, 12 points in the first quarter, held to two in the second quarter. He leads Mathacton with 14 points. And give the credit to Archbishop Wood for really hounding him. And I think that was one of the keys for them to get out to this lead here at halftime. Yeah, absolutely. He started out hot, and I think that that really invigorated that whole Methacton team that they could play with Archbishop Wood. And quite honestly, I think it carried through all the way through the half there. Methacton did not seem to be intimidated in any way, shape, or form. They ran their offense well. They attacked the basket. But I was totally impressed with Archbishop Wood's mm -hmm. half-court offense. I, You know, they didn't get out on the break very much. They really scored most of their points through half-court sets. Second chance points as well. And that's something I'm looking at with Josh Street. He leads all scores with 16. He was around the basket with a lot of putbacks. Jaleel Bethea was doing Jaleel Bethea things. He had 15. He had a couple of threes. He also had the foul shots. And so he, uh, and, and he had the, the baby dunk. That's you know, right. You, I don't, we'll have to see if, if Huck will count that as one, of, <laughs> as one of his slam, what is it, slamometer? Yeah, the, the, the dunk tracker. Dunk tracker. I think it'll count. That's great. All right. Off Huck we is go. here, by the way. Huck. Helped us on an earlier broadcast. I heard, I heard the first game. Look, Look at this. Everybody, Chuck. Uh, Huck Palmer, beg your pardon. Pull up. Yes. And that's a dream start for Mathacton. Ball movement. Kick it to the outside. Manny Rodriguez. I don't think Mathacton needs shots like that just so it frees up Mato so, they, so that the wood isn't focusing just on him. Inside they go. Josh Reed, another point in the paint. Two of them. Matos got to a strong left hand. I don't know how you wave that off, quite honestly. We'll get a replay here if we can. They didn't call a contact on the shot? Boy, that's, that is a tough call if you're Pat Lockerty. Wow. Managing his emotions very well, or lack thereof. Great oh. move by Herman. He was hit as well, and the whistles stay silent to hear Howell brought the arms down, but it's a four-point game. That talented 6'3 senior. Great check out there down low by Mason Conrad. We were told, hey, the son of a coach, John Conrad, his father's the head coach at North Penn High School. That's a box out by a young man that's been told to box out since he was five <laughs> years old. Son of a coach. Can you say that on the live stream? I think so. That's a, that's a joke. <laughs> Son of a coach. Oh, Son gotcha. Of a coach. I, I got it. Uh, we're, 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 we're closer in age, that's why. <laughs> and shout out to the North Penn Knights. My wife, a teacher, good school district, and I saw the, 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 the girls advance in their first round state playoff game. You are just Mr. Information well, today, Jeff. Sal Iamello, we've said it a couple times because he has gotten to the line quite frequently, but just 60%, and I think he's living up to about that percentage you know, here today. Two for five. He's mm. slipping. This will go three for six. I'll get him closer if he makes this. Uh -oh. oh. The iron unkind. Milan Dean just gets himself into trouble. Extremely fortunate to get that ball back. Hit, hit off the defender who was... See the ball. Don't they teach you that? See the right. ball. See the, the, you and the man. And, and boy, those defenders from yeah. attack. They just have to have their head on a swivel they, out there. You do and you don't. I mean, we'll get another look here. Off if his we back. Can go, it goes off his back, but who is Rodriguez covering? <laughs> ah, good eye. Jaleel Bethea. Good eye there, Bob. Don't need to necessarily be on the head on a, head on a swivel there. You want to keep your eyes on Bethea at all times. Yeah, you want you want him denying the ball regardless. Deny, deny, deny. And you don't expect an errant pass right. to hit you in the side slash back. In reality, just a loose ball, <laughs> right? Just kind of, Dane just lost it on the drive. Six-point lead. It's how we started this second half. 
Christian Matos. Always finds a way to get back to that left hand, even when he drives right. Iamello. Good cut to the basket. Contact, Kaunitz, and one. Alex Herman under control as he gets to the lane. And a lemon starburst for Herman on that one. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Jeff doesn't know that reference, I don't think. We'll that, it, we'll I don't think anybody in the, anybody watching this game. You gotta educate us. What is that? Well then that's good, Bruce. It's best when nobody understands what you're trying to say. Well. <laughs> I'm just Isn't kidding. Isn't that always the case? <laughs> <laughs> no, so our good buddy Matt Paul, who was on the broadcast last night, said that back in his day, well not back in his day, but you know, when you're coaching younger kids, he would give Starburst ah. if you could complete the other portion the final third of the old-fashioned three-point play gotcha some condensation i think caused milan dean he was going down to slip yep he was going down and that's a fortunate call for your archbishop wood yep and the official is in a bad spot he has yep. to make he has to make that call yeah not everybody has the camera angle presented by brady joyce by the way but yeah that is about as clear as day and dean fortunate Dean was held scoreless in the first half. He's nailed his first three free throws here in quarter number three. Make it four for four. Conrad pulls this back. Matos. Two come out on him. A good switch by Howell. Matos. <laughs> Ambitious. Up the floor is Howell. Reward the big man for running the floor. The not so big big man here, but he patrols the lane for Archbishop Wood and he ran 94 feet. And Pat Lockard sensing things are getting away. That's a great look, great finish, and a force three, an air ball that set that. Talk to the team about you know, continuing to work for the good shot. I mean, make it's important that they make Archbishop Wood play defense out there. And value each possession because seven points can quickly get to 12, and I think that's tough to come back when you're against Archbishop Wood. You say something about value, Jeff? Yes. I'll show you where you can get some great value. Our sponsor for today's game, <laughs> Faulkner Infinity. Faulkner Infinity of Willow Grove is the number one Infinity dealer in the region. Faulkner has received the Infinity Award of Excellence given to only 10 dealers nationwide for outstanding customer satisfaction. You'll enjoy our easy, no pressure atmosphere, whether you buy online, in person, or a little of both. We offer loaner vehicles for service or pick up and drop off of your vehicle to make service as convenient as possible. Come find out why. More people choose Faulkner Infinity to be sure. Thanks again to Faulkner Infinity for supporting high school athletics. Support those that are supporting these high school athletes and allowing us to come out here and put this telecast on for you. Thanks to Faulkner Infinity and Archbishop Wood High School. Great cut to the basket by Robinson. Count it. Oh. And one. That's a big bucket. Good presence of mind there. Robinson didn't get the ball clean off the pass, but stuck with it. No doubt about that, Bruce. Felt the contact, readjusted himself in midair as well. Back to a four-point game. A smooth stroke at the line. I like it. Tough shot there by Bethea. Again, Josh Reed. Wow. He has been the difference here tonight. And I think the board play of Wood has been the difference tonight so far. Iamello. Robinson driving into trouble. Picked up his dribble. Rodriguez. Oh. Nefecton comes to grab the board. Matos, it would be a big oh. one, and it sure is. Christian Matos. Throwing the offensive glass right at Archbishop Wood. Here we go, folks. Numbers. 
Matos for the tie. Knocked away by Robinson. And you talk about that hustle and going on the glass. It was that Mason Conrad who outsized, comes down with it, finds the open look. And Mathacton converts with the Matos three. Brady McAdams now with the basketball in the half court to run the offense. And they lost Bethea. Howell, yes. Oh, no more pass. How about that look? Wow. Archbishop Wood, they lead by five. Doubling Matos there. Actually kind of dribbled himself into the double team. He did. Foul goes against Archbishop Wood. And you didn't need to reach there, Jeff. If you're Milan Dean, you have it all set up in the corner. Third Every, defender. You've got four defenders. You yeah. Got, you got the base. You mean the corner. It's yeah, yeah. baseline and the sideline. <laughs> and two defenders. <laughs> the student section has been quiet. They've started off hot from the fact, and the Warriors bring in their fans, and they're eager to get. They're eager to explode. If that three had come on the back-to-back -back trips, I think they would have mm -hmm. provided the energy. Well, and he couldn't hit that one either at the line. But they're right where they need to be. Down by five. They hey. cut it to four. This is anybody's ball game. We're Can't talking. lose Mike Green, though. He is so talented, and that's not going to happen very often. We're so. just letting them hang around. Well, I think Mathaxon's doing some of this themselves. They are forcing the issue, playing great offense. We're seeing two teams play at a high level right now. Ayamelo. Ah, that's a great job by Milan Dean. Pushes the pace. Green, Reed. Transition quality in motion. Yeah, that's some of actually what's been missing from Wood's game. They haven't had a lot of transition points, but they're a really good effort. Got the paint touch. Dadazio. Dadazio got all alone. Might have been affected there by Jaleel Bethea. Nice board by Reed. And a kick wasn't called. All the numbers here for Matos. Dadazio. And I don't know how that foul is not yeah, called. He... Now it is. And... It's a bugaboo of mine with officiating. If that ball goes through the rim, that call's not being made. When it doesn't go in, the call comes. Hate, hate, hate it. I agree with you, Bob, 100%. But it was the right call. It was, I mean, there was a foul on the play. But Bob's point is, is if it goes through, he lets it slide, and it's just a basket. Yep. I mean, to be totally clear, yes, Bruce, 100%. That's a foul, and it needs to be called on the contact. Whether the ball goes in or not. That's right. And sometimes there are officials, it's in a, somebody's in a wrong, wrong position or the official in the right position should have made the call, so that official waits. No, that would have been the official to make that call. One of two from the line. Timeout, John Mosco. Got a great contest here. And again, we want to thank our sponsor, Faulkner Infinity, for sponsoring today's contest. Faulkner Infinity of Willow Grove is the number one Infinity dealer in the region. Faulkner has received the Infinity Award of Excellence given to only 10 dealers nationwide for outstanding customer satisfaction. You'll enjoy our easy, no pressure atmosphere, whether you buy online, in person, or a little of both. We offer loaner vehicles for service or pick up and drop off of your vehicle to make service as convenient as possible. Come find out why. More people choose Faulkner Infinity to be sure. A look inside the Archbishop Wood huddle as they get ready to go here. It's going to be no small task for either of these teams to win this game here tonight. Two teams near the top of their respective districts. Two very challenging districts to compete in. The winner gets the champion from District 1. Bethea was blocked. Ayamelo picks it up. 
Ayamelo carves his way home. Three-point game. And the fact that they're doing it the right way, you know, in, in getting some and a technical foul. And that was Looks pointed like on Moscow. In, I think it is against John Moscow. Wow. So that means he's sitting the rest of the way. That's right. That's right. We talked about that in the last contest. PIAA rule. They're going to have to make a seat for him. Yeah. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> Brady. Brady, get this. Brady, get this line change here where everybody's got to move down one seat. <laughs> You know, the interesting part here is that, you know, Matacton just has to do this, you know, in the half-court defense in getting extra possessions because they don't want to, I don't think, put a press on um, Archbishop Wood and up the tempo. I think that, really, the tempo of the game is really played into Matacton's hands. Well, it's a team that's unafraid to run. I know, I know. I think both teams, Bruce, to your point, have run the half-court offense, and I think that's great for, for both clubs, but Methacton came in, and when they need to run, they have, and they're unafraid to do it against Archbishop Wood. This is a great matchup here. Montos, and they called the offensive foul for the chicken wing on Jaleel Bethea. Not sure it was egregious or blatant, but it was there. Yep, and it's hard to see from that angle, but you can see, by the way, Bethea reacted there. He was walling up there against Christian Matos. Matos got the steal. Loose ball and Bethea first on the floor, and this could get ugly. The officials got right in the middle of it. Boy, Thank Bethea, goodness. Bethea's got to be careful because he doesn't want to get ejected because that would mean a two oh. games out. That, I mean, that was instigated by Jaleel Bethea. I don't know what the call's gonna be, if any. And John Mosco is standing up. And I just wonder if there's any adjudication to that. Because again, the PIAA rule is once a coach picks up a technical foul, he has to sit the remainder of the game. Now this is an official timeout here, so a little bit different. The three officials huddle at midcourt, as you can see. Well, quite honestly, I think that they're gonna have to tied you onto that chair i mean he's yeah. just very emotional and uh you know he's got to be careful he that's cares sure. immensely about this archbishop Absolutely. wood basketball program he's Absolutely. made it his own and he feels really connected to this class that so the jump ball is called the alternate possession will give it to archbishop wood it doesn't look like they called any fouls i don't think so oh no 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 oh my they just signaled technical foul. Here we go. Oh, double technical. Double technical, one on Jalil Bethea and one on Wes Robinson. No shooting here, right? No shooting. It's interesting that Robinson got the technical because I saw Rodriguez and Iamello right scrapping in there. I didn't catch number thirty Wes Robinson, but oh, there was a, been there's a pile. The fact. They may have been after. Yeah, but they separated them pretty quickly. I'm with you, Jeff. Hard to uncoil all of that. And at the end of the day, unless there's somebody in foul trouble, you gotta pick somebody. And Milan Dean is fouled. You had a sense that any type of contact on the next play was going to be whistled. <laughs> and that's a pretty good job by Archbishop Wood to recognize that, right? The idea for these officials now is to get the game back under control. And so how are you going to do that? By starting to adjudicating that contact. To that point, Bob, hand checking could become a problem. Yeah. Where they would normally or potentially let them play. Archbishop Wood is the home team on the scoreboard. This is a District 12, a Philadelphia Catholic League site. So the Vikings lead by two and now by three. I think an important last minute 10 for Methacton. Beautiful offense from Methacton. The assist from Conrad. Dadazio put it home. Milan Dean 
Oh, we gotta watch this. Well, I gotta see this. Well, I don't think the defender was in legal guarding position. The question comes as to is Milan Dean in control of his body? Yeah. I'm okay with that That's call. A good call. Yeah, I am too. Yeah, the defender agree. definitely stepped in. He came in a little late. Undercut him. Yep, and I think Milan Dean would be considered under control at that point on the dribble drive. It looked a little awkward when he toppled over. Well, when you're running into a defender, you're going to look awkward. That's right. In midair. <laughs> In midair. <laughs> One of two. And Bea came up with it. Threw it away, though. Robinson goes behind his back at a tough time, and a foul is called against Dean. Just kind of wrong place, wrong time there for Dean. And I think that's going to send him to the free throw line. Yes, it will. Both teams in yep. the bonus yep. for the yep. remainder of this third quarter. And so it's a good guy to send. Manny Rodriguez at 90% on the year coming in. Quickly on that last free throw, Milan Dean had made seven straight in the quarter as first miss of the game. That's a shooter's roll for Manny Rodriguez. Chance to tie it for the first time in a long time. He was termed as a 3 and D guy when we talked with Pat Lockard, and he's lived up to that billing. He's had the assignment of Jaleel Bethea at times over the course of the night. He's hit some triples, goes one of two from the line, and it's a one-point contest. It looked like they're really trying to shadow Bethea. And it is, again, Rodriguez on Bethea. One step shy of the logo. Bethea wants to go one-on-one. -on -one. That's a great pass, but they call the foul first. Now you send a 90% free throw shooter to the line, so oh. it might result in two anyway. Well, is it two shots? Yeah, they're giving him two shots, even though it looked like he was passing the ball. Nope. No, it's bonus, Bruce. Yeah. Oh, okay. Five fouls, five plus fouls against Mathaxon here in the third quarter. Jalil Bethea's first point here in the second half. No kidding. 15 in the first half, one now here in the third quarter. 16 for the game. That's my Brooks County math there for you, Bruce. It's okay. Education. Two of two for Jalil Bethea, and he'll come off the floor going a little offense defense. A momentary respite for him to save those legs. This should be a final possession, correct? Yep, I would think so, and I think that's why Bethea comes to the bench there. Mathacton can tie the ball game. Dedazio. Matos on the curl. He puts it up. What a finish. Three seconds left. Bea with time. Howell good if it goes and that looks good for a long time on this angle one more look it's a great job by Beth by Bea just get downhill they're going to collapse to you open shot there for Howell you can't argue with it one more time folks Infinity Faulkner Infinity in Willow Grove today's sponsor Faulkner Infinity of Willow Grove is the number one Infinity dealer in the region. Faulkner has received the Infinity Award of Excellence given to only 10 dealers nationwide for outstanding customer satisfaction. You'll enjoy our easy, no pressure atmosphere, whether you buy online, in person, or a little of both. We offer loaner vehicles for service or pick up and drop off of your vehicle to make service as convenient as possible. Come find out why more people choose Faulkner Infinity to be sure. Welcome back. Fourth quarter <laughs> underway here from Cardinal O'Hara. Bruce was, was telling us many things as we were counting down to one. That's why he's laughing, but we are back and better than ever. District 12 site, Philadelphia Catholic League, Cardinal O'Hara. What a site it is, Bruce. We've done games here over the years past, and it sets up for tremendous basketball and these two teams delivering. 
Well, who's going to step up here in quarter number four? Archbishop Wood with a one-point lead. Mathacton, the upstart, but they don't feel like the upstart. It's a talented group. It sure is. Matos turns around oh. and gives Mathacton the lead. He's so beautiful when he goes to his left. And he does seem to find his way back to the left most times, doesn't he, Bruce? He does. And that's Mathacton's first lead since 23-22 early in the second quarter. Long three won't go, but all day long for Archbishop Wood, they've controlled the glass. Howell just couldn't put it in. Conrad. Conrad slicing his way in. That's a beautiful drive. He got his own rebound oh. and gave it up. And that foul taken there by Christian Matos. John's got to be careful. He's up off the bench. He is up off the bench. For those of you just joining us, John Mosco picked up a technical foul. And for PIAA rules, we also saw this in an earlier first-round game. Delone Catholic's head coach, Brandon Staub, has to sit down after you pick up that technical for the remainder of the contest. But they uh, slices his way home. Well, we just saw... Matos for Mathacken and Bethea for Wood. Those are the guys who expect to step up. Uh, and that's a tough matchup on the switch there. Alex Herman had to pick up Bethea. Bethea recognized it. Ayamelo is going to pull this out and restart the offense. Sal, Ayamelo, so good at getting a paint touch. He's blocked, but Tedesio is in the right place. Oh. Such confidence by both those young men. Milan, I'm sorry, beg your pardon, that's Deuce Maxi. And he looked like smooth, he's smooth. He really elevated on that one. That looked good from Deuce Maxi, who's had a nice afternoon. Really a lot of offensive contributors on both teams. We play into the mid-60s with three quarters of the way still to go. What a, what a finish. <laughs> Christian Matos can out. Counted and won. What a great feed to the breaking Matos in the lane. Buckle up, folks. We've got six minutes of a heavyweight fight brewing here. It's a one-point lead for Mathacton. Matos with 24 and a free throw to come. Wow, and we were told a lot about Matos. Were we not coming into this contest? Certainly District 1 knows all about him. And he is delivering. He relished this matchup. And he's not a one-dimensional player. He'll go inside. He'll cut to the basket. He'll shoot the three. Wow. Three levels, Bruce. All three levels he can score at. I'm... Deuce Maxi, that five-second count is coming, and Matos picks up the personal. That's his second personal foul in the last few minutes, and that is his fourth personally. That's a huge call. So now he stays on the floor, Jeff. Attack the hip if you're Archbishop Wood. Go right at the outside hip off the bounce, and they're not going to give him that opportunity. <laughs> Bob Long, the coach. <laughs> Has just been countered. That's right. By the other coach. Well, but now you gotta find a way to score offensively without him on the floor. Not only to score, but to take the attention off of some of those secondary options for Mathacton. Uh, that's a great point, Bob. Great hands. Herman brings it forward. Looked like Iamello got in there and there it comes back with Deuce. Poked away by Conrad. We'll get another look at all the melee. That was after the initial steal. And Herman, tough time to try to go through the legs yes, there. You had yep. Conrad flanking you. Reed. Oh. Great hands by Iamello. And he just attacks Jaleel Bethea. Herman gave it up. Maxi, I'm sorry, beg your pardon again, De Deuce Maxi. That's the last touch by the knee. Oh! -ho -ho! And down the other side of the floor, there's an injured Mathacton player. Let's get another look at Maxi all alone. 
But Sal Iamello does not give up, and it's a good call from that official. Hoping that's just a cramp yeah. by on Manny Rodriguez. Yeah, I think it is just a cramp, thankfully. But hold, but uh, so, sorry, but we got so much going on. Iamello has just been a defensive spark plug. He has been poking balls away and just getting his hands in. He has been really, really an energizer on the defensive end. I mean, these la this last minute, both teams have done everything to steal the ball away from the opponent. And on that last defensive play, Deuce Maxey's going uncontested to the basket, and it gets poked out, and it's knocked off Maxey out of bounds for Mathacton to take the ball over. And again, just to confirm here, Brady Joyce doing a great job on camera. We're going to let Manny Rodriguez with, again, it's tough to have privacy here in front of this many fans, but certainly on the telecast, we're going to keep him off. It does look, we certainly hope, like a cramp. He's being helped off the floor right now. It, and it's, I mean, usually you have cramps, and hopefully they can get him some fluids, and, and if that's what it is, get him. He's, he's going to be a key down the stretch, hobbling to the bench. Where's the blue tent when we need I it? I know. Yeah, right. Why is there a blue tent in football? Uh, not one in basketball when there is in <laughs> football, you know? Yeah. Well, it's easier to get to the locker room in basketball. Yeah, you can take two steps and you're behind the uh, closed doors. It is a two-point lead for Methacton. This team took an early lead. Archbishop Wood fought back. Took a relatively substantial lead in the late second, early third quarter, but Archbishop Wood... Has had a challenge stopping this Methacton team offensively. Iamello. He wanted Conrad. That would have been a tough pass, quite honestly. And Bethea was trailing. Melandine pulls it down and is fouled. Third team foul against Methacton. It's a war anytime you get into the lane. Iamello wanted a foul call right here. But the paint is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> here today. Well, Mato's back in the game now. I was wondering how long he would be on the bench. And let's see who he's guarding. Looks like he's going to go up against Green. Dangerous pass. Bethea steps back. Count it and one. Oh my gosh. That's just an incredible shot. He has a knack for creating that contact. Maybe kicking the leg out of touch. There it is, the right leg, just a tad there. And enough to draw the contact. Archbishop Wood takes the lead. You can be the judge at home. But what we know is this young man can create space for himself, draw a little contact, find the nylon. Four-point play. Now we're putting a little bit of pressure out top. Conrad. Mason Conrad is defended by Green. Conrad, tough shot. Try to get the English. It wouldn't go, and he picks up the personal foul. That's the fifth team foul against Mathacton. Bonus time for the next four minutes of regulation. Well, that's going to be a huge advantage for Archbishop Wood here in the next couple of minutes. Deuce Maxey will shoot two from the line. 74% on the year. What a game. Well, it's had everything, that's for sure. Most of, if not all of the rest of the games across the state have gone final at the 6A level. But a big question is, who will play Lower Marion on Wednesday night? And where are we going? Yeah, where are we going <laughs> next week? That's always fun, making that determination. Maxi one of two from the line. Sal Iamello defended by Bethea on the ball. Double team came on him. 
That's a great job by Herman. That floor was wide open because Archbishop Wood doubled up top. They spaced it well. Bethea had to kick out to the wing defensively, and Alex Herman able to slice to the hoop. Bethea, count it, <laughs> and one. Next level basketball from one of the top players in the country, an A-Smith All-American. Boy, not a lot of uh, offensive imagination, but you don't need it when you got a player like Bethea. Just let him isolate, and look what happens. Well, and it feels like if Archbishop Wood does win this game, you're going to look back, and that's going to be the difference, is one team had Jaleel Bethea in crunch time, and the other did not. Not that Mathacton can't come back and do it here, but Jaleel Bethea has seven points on the last two possessions as we get into the wee hours of Saturday night. Four-point lead. Can Mathacton answer? Christian Matos. What a look inside for Herman. Couldn't finish. And now Bethea leads the break. Deuce Maxi. Six-point lead. It is the largest lead since midway through the third quarter for Archbishop Wood. And a timeout is called. And Jaleel Bethea looks a little dinged up. Yeah, he does. It's the right hand. But again, I think Archbishop Wood a lot more fast break points here in the second half than they did in the first. They've opened up a six-point margin, Bob. I'll tell you what, it's going to be really hard for Mathacton here. Uh, they're going to have to do something like press Archbishop Wood to get some extra possessions, and I think that that really plays into their hands, right, Jeff? Yeah, because Archbishop Wood is so athletic and so confident with the basketball that yeah, if you don't press them, if you don't press them, they're gonna they're gonna take the air out of it, and the clock is not your friend. I mean, there's still three minutes left, but that's gonna go yeah. quickly. Pick your poison. As we look inside the Archbishop Wood huddle, Jaleel Bethea is sitting on the chair, which means he's prepared to go back into the game. The hand looks okay yeah. as of now, and I don't know. It was really hard to tell, but. Was he going in for the follow, and did he catch it awkwardly on the rim itself? Yeah, I didn't see. I don't know. I think he may have just banged it on another player. Okay. Whatever it is, no worse for the wear. And the other thing we have to keep an eye on is the four fouls on Matos. Yeah. Yeah. By the way. The Archbishop Wood boys trying to extend their season. Thanks to them for sponsoring this broadcast. The Archbishop Wood girls took down Radner today as well, and they continue their march for what would be a fourth consecutive state title. That's pretty good. Not too bad. Imagine being a senior on this year's team, Jeff. Four for four would be a great way to end it. And a foul is called against Bethea. Two shots coming for Sal Iamello, and it is time to get right at the line, Bruce, if you're Sal Iamello. He has struggled in that regard here today. Yeah, and really important here, uh, getting the foul on Bethea, but also, you know, getting some scoring while the clock stops. Yes. I think something, you, you know, really have to start taking into account here. He's two for six heading into this trip. Tough night at the stripe. Tadazio, I think, told him to follow through. Be confident. Seems a little flat. There's not much arc to it. Two for eight from the line, and it's a six-point game. And Archbishop Hood rarely does this, guys. But why not? I mean, they're, they're at, they're in the bonus. They're up by six. Why not? Bethea. Deuce Maxi. Bethea wanted it back. And it might be a travel. It's a jump ball. Yeah. Jump ball. Yep. And yep. Wood will retain possession. Yep, yep, yep. 
And look who's checking back in. Manny Rodriguez. Good call there, Jeff. Great to see. Although well, he's not going to do it well, just he, yet. All right. Let's rephrase that. He's in a position. <laughs> he, was, he, went, he went to check in. He didn't actually check in. Yes. Good to know he's in a position to play <laughs> if they need him. <laughs> and they will. And that yep. was last touch. That should be Mathacton basketball. Yeah, yes. Milan Dean. And now we go. Now we get Manny in. The 3 and D guy is going to come in. Great look from Brady Joyce at that last touch. Boy, Wes Robinson comes out, but he's played a whale of a game tonight for Mathacton. Here we go, folks. Bob Long, Jeff Sherilla, Bruce Badgley, and Brady Joyce on the camera. We head to stretch time. Mathacton's going to need to make every possession count here. Matos, it's a good look. And he oh! knocked it down. It's a three-point game. Still an eternity to go in this one. Now what do you do if you're Archbishop Wood? You're in the bonus the rest of the way. And they give it away. Ayamelo. Ayamelo shields his way. Got it to go. Timeout, Pat Lockard. And Sal Ayamelo, undersized, but the strongest player on the team, says Pat Lockard. He hasn't been able to convert at the foul line. That's all right. I'll convert amidst two defenders going up to block it. Just an incredible defensive effort there. And a one-point game, a minute 21 to go. It was a good defensive effort, but there was miscommunication on the handoff. <laughs> Wood just got a little confused on who was taking it, and the next thing you know, Mathacton gets it down to one with 121 to go. Let's bring you guys now inside our broadcast booth here. Bob Long, Jeff Cirilla, and Bruce Badgley. Quickly, from each of you guys, let's start with Jeff. How does Archbishop Wood salt this away and win the game? And Bruce, how does Mathacton snag this one from Archbishop Wood? I think Archbishop Wood needs to be aggressive, take care of the ball, and don't rush the shots because they can get to the foul line. Yeah, Mathacton, I'll tell you what, they just have to be patient. I think that they have to let Archbishop Wood kind of run some clock. Wood has had a difficult time salting the ball away. Here we go, folks. Archbishop Wood, they lead by one, the number three seed out of District 12. They did not accomplish their goal of winning the Philadelphia Catholic League Championship. They didn't get to the Palestra. But this senior class is good enough to win it all at the state level. But they have to win this one first. Milan Dean couldn't finish. Bethea brought it down, count it, and won. And as it's been for so long at Archbishop Wood, Jaleel Bethea is showing himself to be the difference. This and not afraid to go up against everybody inside for that really tough basket. This has been his fourth quarter. 90 percenter from the foul line all year long. He's lived up to that percentage here today. He had the baby slam. He had the four-point play. And now he's going for the three-point play. And a long way to go, but apropos of what we've seen to this point, Archbishop Wood has controlled the offensive glass. So many second-chance points. Josh Reed leads the way in terms of second-half points, second-chance points. Well, and Math Jaleel Bethea has owned the fourth quarter, Bruce. With Mathacton with only one timeout remaining as well. Matos. Ayamelo. That's a deep three. A quick hoist. A give up. Josh Reed. Yes. It's a six point lead. Two possession game. Matos has to move quickly and you probably need a three. Matos is fouled. Not a huge issue. Just the third team foul against Archbishop Wood. And the clock is now. I'm sorry, against uh, Mathaxon. No, beg your pardon. Against Wood. You got it right the first time. First time. Stick with your guns. And now you got to pull the quick trigger here with only 15 seconds left. Oh. 
It does have to be a three. You have to burn that timeout because it is the last chance to stop the clock. We talk about it a lot. Clock does not stop on made baskets inside a minute at the high school level. So you have to use timeouts or have enough time. It's not going to matter. Put the cap on it, Jaleel. That's a big time slam. That's Archbishop Wood capping this one off and moving on to the next round. They'll take on the number one seed from District 1, Lower Marion High School, and that will be worth the price of admission. But they hang on in a key moment here tonight. Bob's going to run down and grab some interviews. What a great finish. This game was nip and tuck all the way to the final minute or so, Bruce. And now uh, we're going we're to watch... Archbishop would move on and Methacton, unfortunately for them, you know, in this bracket, you always have what could have been and, you know, they're, they're gonna, they're gonna be what could have been. So many of these games just come down to, you know, one or two possessions. And in the case of Archbishop Wood, in those one or two critical possessions, it came down to Bethea really taking control of the game. We'll get some final stats with him in a second and we've got Bob Long who is down on the court with Jaleel Bethea. We're going to send it to him as Brady Joyce is on the camera. Oh, no, he does not have Jaleel. Am I? Yeah, he does. He's got Jaleel, and he also has Josh Reed with him. Take it away, Bob. Thanks, guys. We have Jaleel Bethea. We have Josh Reed with us, guys. I think you knew, and I think we all knew, that that's a tough team over there that was going to be prepared and fight for their season. And you guys were able to, in the key moments, come up with the big plays. Jalil, let's start with you. You're the leading scorer in the fourth quarter. The big buckets when needed. How did it happen? The whole game, I feel like i just been rushing the whole time. So the only thing I really do is let the game come to me. And that's, and that's what I did. Coming to the, the first minutes of the game. Josh, the offensive glass. You guys are not the tallest team, but it doesn't seem to matter. And you and Brooks going in amongst the big boys and controlling the glass. Did that tonight. How? Uh, I just mainly, like, ignored the holding, ignored the fouling. I, I didn't complain to the refs. I just fought through it, pushed through it. And that's how I got my offensive rebound, the defensive rebounds. You guys are a, a team that has everything in front of you. A state championship, the goal. You were in the state championship two years ago in a state semifinal last year. Jalil, what is it going to take this year to raise that trophy? Play hard. Play hard every single game. Don't matter who our competition is. Thing we got to do is just play hard from the start of the game. And I promise you, we're not losing. Lower Marion is who will have to face you guys. They won earlier today. Talented group that won District 1. What did you learn playing a team like Methuen about how you need to come up in the big moments? And what did you in terms of when you're in that cauldron, how you make the big play? Uh, we know by now every team's going to bring their best when they play us. They want to beat us. We have a name on our team that everybody wants. So, you know, we have to come in and protect what we, what we want. Thank you so much for doing this. Congrats on a win. This was one heck. And we'll see you guys real soon. Good luck on Wednesday. Josh Reed and Jaleel Bethea and a couple of fans that Jaleel is making some time for. We'll see if Bob... Remember that picture, young man? Yeah, let's... That's a good one. We'll grab John Mosco here shortly. That's what I was going to say. If Bob's going to grab the coach. John Mosco is with us. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. It was a, you know, tough to everybody to play. The fact that it's a good team. They run their stuff well. Uh, we were not able to but and then at the fourth quarter, we got a lot of when you got Jalil Bethay and Josh Reed, they, you know, they'll put points on the board. And the offensive glass. It's a team that we talked about it in the off season, losing Carson Howard and having to reframe the rotation in the offense a little bit. Well, guess what? Josh Reed 
And Jalil Bethay and Milan Dean are committed to that offensive glass, aren't they? Yes, uh, they are, especially Josh Reed all year, Milan on the defensive glass, so we really didn't miss, miss anything with the rebounding. We missed Carson a lot, but they picked up for him, and then you saw and, um, Jalil went up and got a big rebound. He really got up in the air, and that's we all did. Even though Deuce fouled out, he was he was solid on defense, tried to take a charge, handled the ball, got us in the set. So we, it ended up third quarter, we were a little out of sorts. Fourth quarter was a team win. We talked pregame about the long layoff, and it's just the way it works with the Catholic League and then how District 12 and when you're in that position. How do you feel like your guys responded initially? And and certainly, how did they come to as the second half continued? Yeah, I think we came, we we came out in the beginning and we responded, and played well, but I think they listened to our game plan too much, guarding the three point line, and we gave up too many layups back door, and they were able to you know um, penetrate, get some easy layups, and then we started guarding both. And thirteen's going to be a hell of a player, sophomore, but he was able to get back door, but he was able to make shots. You know, going left-handed, and we were there on a lot of those shots, and he made some some good ones. Coming to Cardinal O'Hara here today, you know this venue. Jaleel Bethea went off when you played the Lions in the regular season. Was it nice to come? I know you want to play this game at home, but a comfortable venue? In a comfortable venue. Um, My assistant coach before the game said the good thing, I I want to say he's averaging 28 here a game, meaning Jaleel. I don't know what he got today, but close to it. Um, I know he had 15 at halftime or something like that. But, um, yeah, it's nice to play. We're, we're comfortable playing, and we know the floor. We know the confines, the lighting, and so forth. Well, there won't be a long layoff for the next one. Just a couple of days, and then you'll take on Lower Marion. I'm not going to ask you for film study, but what do you know about them, and what will the challenge be? Uh, you know, they're well coached with Downer, who's been there forever, Coach Greatest players, Kobe. Um, you know they're twenty-seven and one. Um, you know they're going to run their stuff. They're going to be disciplined. They're not going to turn the ball over. We have to play much better defensively um, uh, to be able to stop them from their back doors. But they've been trying to score, so I don't know if we'll hold the ball or not. But we'll see. Well, we are looking forward to that. You guys are well on your way again. Congrats on the start of another state tournament run. Well done. Thank you. Thanks, Bob, for everything. John Mosco with us. Enjoy this one. Jeff, Bruce. Okay, back in our broadcast booth. Jeff Cirilla, Bruce Badgley, as we wind this um, 81 to 73 uh, 73 victory there. My God, they're so fast at turning the scoreboards (laughs) off here, Jeff. But, wow, I tell you what, um, you know, Coach Mosco talked a little bit about that. You know, uh, Wood a little bit flat in quarter number three, really turned it on in quarter number four to kind of pull away from a very game at the Acton squad and come away for, with this victory. Yeah, the the third quarter, you know, things tightened up uh, with uh, a one point game heading into the into the fourth, and at that point, the uh, coach. I'm, surprised not surprised but it's interesting that he knew that but they had 15 at halftime and he said well how many did he end up with 31 to lead all wow. scores as he had 14 so he had he went 15 in the first half two in the third quarter which we've talked about wood going flat and then 14 to close it out including a four-point play a couple of dunks a three-point play grand total of 31 and i'll say josh reed had a quiet 24 i mean Wow. We saw his name, and if I said, how many did you have? Yeah, maybe he had 18, maybe, it, but 24 for Josh Reed. And on the other side, when you talk about the, uh, the fact in Warriors, Matos had 28. He had 20 through three quarters, so he had, you know, he, he's his, he had the, he had the low point in the second quarter. He had a, a fast start with 12 in the first, had a couple of threes, and then in the second quarter, he ended up with just two points, and then the rest of the way, he had a little bit of foul trouble, but, I think it was the Archbishop Wood just experience and, and, and athleticism that was, was the difference. No sh- shade on the fact that they had good ball handlers, well run, well coached, just, just didn't, didn't have enough to get across the finish line. Yeah, I thought that, and from a coaching perspective, I thought it was great 
to uh, watch Coach Lockhart and uh, uh, John Mosco, you know, kind of go at it there. I think that, you know, they kept everything in front of them, and they were ahead of the game. You know, so many times coaches get behind the flow, but each one of these coaches, I thought, stayed ahead of the game with good moves. And, boy, you cannot fault the fact that it really was a total team effort, you know, on both sides. I, you know, I talked about the fact of how I felt the role players – we're going to be the important part of, you know, the Archbishop Wood team. And I think that that was the case, you know, with Deuce Maxey and Reed and, and that. So Yeah, Maxey came in. He finished with 10. You talked about Reed. We mentioned he had 24. To answer the question that Coach had down there, Bob, as you were walking up, 31 for Jaleel, 14 in the fourth quarter. And then the rest of the scoring, you had Howell with 8, Milan Dean with 7. So that rounded out a, a pretty balanced scoring when you have uh, – five guys close to double figures on the flip side Mathacton, christian matos had those 28 and then they had a few guys they had uh, iamello played tough the free throws didn't go down for him but he did have that nice basket to cut it to one late he finished with 13 rodriguez had 11 herman had 10 i like it i like it full on Statistics unofficially official, officially unofficial. Un- unofficially, uh, officially unofficial. <laughs> the the largest lead I believe was seven at any point throughout the game for either team, and uh, we talked about uh, you know this. You know, it's sad when a season has to come to an end, but when you're in a single elimination bracket, you've got 32 teams in this classification, all classifications. Only one can be the champion. So, and if you sign up for this, you want you want this. And it yep. was, uh, I think, a great learning experience for Methacton. And Archbishop Wood keeps its uh, hopes alive as they continue that next step, four more uh, to get to that championship. Well, I think that that final score, 81-73, I mean, the fast pace. I mean, it was a well-played game by both squads. And one of those games that, unfortunately, there has to be a winner and a loser and seasons end and careers end, but life lives on for Archbishop Wood in the PI AA tournament. So let's take a look at the bracket because Brady Joyce has been. Uh, you want to go on the headset? You want to? You yeah. want to talk? You want to talk this through? No, he's good. Uh, he's good. He's good. Well, we top, we can only get him on the air <laughs> one time. The top of the bracket, the the, the bracket, the. The games that we have been talking about as we head into the second round, Lower Marion advanced with a 30-point win today, and Archbishop Wood came away today with their 8-point win. So those two will square off on Wednesday in round number two. Just going straight down the bracket, the uh, Springfield team, they beat Abraham Lincoln, so District 12 loses the second seed, and they'll be facing the uh, Springford uh, Rams. Uh, the, the Rams coming out of District 1 as well. So those two will match up. Parkland, a District 11 winner. Very wow. talented team, by they, the way. They beat Plymouth White Marsh. Very talented team, yep. Chambersburg with a win over CB East. Boy, to District up. 1 taking it on the nose yeah. today. And, by the way, finding a middle ground there. Chambersburg is a long drive for anybody. Come from Parkland, that's, where are we going to find? Lancaster somewhere, maybe? Yeah. Harrisburg? Redding? Yeah, it could be the Geigel. <laughs> Parkland, Parkland versus Chambersburg in the next round. And then you had the uh, Westchester Henderson moving on with a win over Hazleton. And then Roman Catholic, the, the one seed out of District 12, they win easily over Downingtown West. So it's Henderson versus Roman Catholic. Yeah. I like it. Well, I like Cumberland it. Valley wins. I tell you, a big win also for a team that I think Bob and I have seen and I think is very talented, Central York, coming out on top over I, Garnet Valley. I that was the you, number one seed out of District 1. It's a, well, they're the two seed. Oh, two two seed. Look, yeah. And they were also a 14 seed. Yes. Heading into that, when they seeded that bracket, Garnet Valley was the team that beat Methacton. So Garnet Valley is the 14 rises up to grab the two seed and maybe a little bit exposed as they lose here in the first round of I States. tell you what, I'm not in the business of making prognostications by any stretch. Don't get me wrong. But I would not be surprised to see a team like Central York in Hershey. Maybe wow. a little bit of a hot take, but they, I really like that team. They've got some teams. really Who? transcendent players. That, with this, what do you need to get a team? to a championship well central york is the five seed out of district three and looking at the bottom they're in the bottom half of the bracket redding is still alive cumberland valley one that's not your average five seed yeah yep. and then you at the Coatesville, at, uh, district one team moves on yep and then the bottom half you where central york their next 
matchup would be against Red Lion. It is against Red Lion. That's a conference opponent, too. And then on the western half of the state, Upper St. Clair out of the WPIAL taking on State College out of mm-hmm. District 6. Both of those are champions who will move on. One will go home and one will advance. So, Brady, thank you so much for grabbing those scores and those winners as we head on to the second round Wednesday, March 13th in the that's just class 6A. And, Bob, I know you're looking forward to those state finals you now that we've expanded classes. You've got boys six times. Yeah. You've got the girls with six different brackets. And this is just – this is what March Madness with college hoops right around the corner. This is this is the most wonderful time of the year. It sure is. It sure is. Thanks for laying out that bracket. And another piece of the only intrigue, I guess, is where we'll be on yeah. Wednesday night. And so more or, to come and there. Tuesday. Follow the <laughs> channel. Follow the channel to find out where we'll be on each of these nights. One other note for you, Bob, as you head into that game. Coming into tonight, Jaleel Bethea, 1,598 career points. So we add 31 to that. That puts him at 1,629. He's within the 10th spot of all-time scores in the uh in the Philadelphia, Philadelphia Catholic, Catholic League, League. Wow. so uh, it's, uh, I think, 53. I think 1653, so he's... Uh, he's getting in a rarefied air. So he needs, he might get it next game. If they advance, they would definitely, he, if he doesn't get it on Wednesday, you'd look, feel good about look it. Look for him cracking the top 10 shortly after that. Great broadcast. Thanks to Brady Joyce for being here. Thanks to Jeff Sharilla. Thanks to Bruce Badgley for our whole team here at Bob Long Sports. Bob Long saying so long from Cardinal O'Hara High School, site of the doubleheader here today in the PIAA Catholic League playoffs. Winner in game one, Devin Prep over DeLone Catholic. And then in game number two, an instant classic. Archbishop Wood outlasts Methacton to end Methacton's dream season. It's a program that's not going anywhere, though. Some tremendous talent, some young players, and a great coach in Pat Lockard. But John Mosco continues on. He likes to play into mid to late March. It's become somewhat of a rite of passage for Archbishop Wood, and they'll get at least one more tilt. One more 32-minute period of basketball to play together on Wednesday against Lower Marion. Have a great night, everyone, and we'll talk to you real soon.